serious scientist, or so some people think that. You know, and then on the other hand, um, you are this trickster. You're this person who performs like all these uh, weird tricks. And these tricks are usually entrenched in deception. And if you are a product of, let's say, a university, and you know, most of you are on the way to being products of the university, one of the things that they teach you is don't lie, you know, don't cheat. Uh, but that's what I used to do for many years. And it got me many dates and <laughs> you know, money and fame and like all these things. So what is it about, you know, what is it about uh, magic that is so uh, interesting? So first of all, magic is almost like a universal thing because you, you sort of view it and it's, um, and it's entertaining. There's always a kid, it's almost like a joke. There's like an unexpected punchline of sorts. But, you know, the fact of the matter is that as, as a magician, as magicians in plural, we, we only have a limited set of tricks. It's not infinite. Um, and today, particularly with you guys like going on the web and you can look up you know, whatever you want you know, fairly quickly, um, it creates a situation where tricks are being revealed very, very quickly. So, so magicians have to be very ingenious. And it creates a whole bunch of, it, it creates a, a lot of pressure. Like being a magician today is not like it used to be, let's say, 20 years ago. Either, because uh, people expose what you're doing very, very quickly. And then it, it, it dawned on us, like the magical community, the, the, the you know, magic circle, if you will, it dawned on us that most people, um, even when they are, when they know the trick, they still don't get it. Which is a very, that was a very uh, interesting epiphany for us, including for me. You know, I thought that when somebody will know how a trick is performed, they will say, okay, you know, I got it, and so on. But it turns out that sometimes people know, or they think they know, they still don't get it. That's a weird concept. I'll try to show it to you uh, in a little bit. Now, the psychology of magic is quite rich, and the reason that it's quite rich is because most people are really naive when it comes to deception. Like, really, really naive. Unbelievably naive. And sometimes, I can perform a magic trick that would require sleight of hand, or a critical moment, a tenth of a second, and some of you are going to be like looking at your cell phones. And you're still going to be thinking that you know, you're going to get it. So people are checking their email you know, while, while I perform the trick. And they say, oh, what do you, oh, 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 okay, all right. There's no way in hell you're going to, you're going to understand what's happening unless you have like a very, very good um, attention spot on, on what's happening. Because a lot of magic tricks are based on a momentary shift in your attention. And the whole idea is to be able to orchestrate, if I work with a large group of people, the idea is to orchestrate that shift. Okay, so how do you create such a shift? That's very interesting. Uh, there are a number of ways that you can, you know, you can create a shift like that. So, you know, it's, it's 6, 6, 10 now. Okay, so most people look at where I'm pointing, they say it's 6, 10. That's like the justified reason to look over there, but it's stupid. Okay, but, but just, just making that gesture, most people will shift their attention over there, and during that time, I can reach like into my pocket and get something out, uh, or I can put something in. I will try to perform as, as a magician. I'm not allowed to tell you how I do trick. Definitely as a professional magician, although I'm not professional anymore because it's not my main source of living. Uh, today, I just steal and cheat directly. I don't, you know. <laughs> but I'll try to show you a few tricks. Um, Entertaining on the one hand, easy to understand on the other hand. It doesn't require a whole glamour and, you know, we don't need tigers, we don't need the Statue of Liberty. Um, you know, but, but the, same, the same applies to, to many other things. Now, the first and most important thing is, if you're interested in any of this, there's a link uh, that you can go to from my lab that will allow you to participate in all kinds of magic junk, uh, if, if you're sort of interested in this. Now, I'd like to start is there a way to close the store, by the way, so that people will know because it will really distract me as the performing and then people come. So um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, I'm going to start with uh, two clips that um, we took in my lab recently, actually. Um, so uh, with, with Galina, who's actually taking some um, video footage over there, I'm going to show it to you first. It's mute. Okay, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit. Okay, so first I want you to just see it. Um, and what I, what I really want you to do is you look at this clip, actually. Just need to find it. We have a weird uh, constellation with the, with the computer here. I can't see on my computer what's happening over here. So I just need to find the mouse. Hello. Uh, yeah, maybe if I turn the mouse off, it's going to be a little bit easier for me. 
Okay, so the first thing that I want to show you, I'm going to put the lights in 25% just so that you know you have a little bit of light. Um, I can't see it here. Okay, let, let, it's self-explanatory. Let's just have a look and then uh, talk about it. So the bald guy is like setting something on the table. Oh, we have to get rid of this because this is this is actually hiding the. So there's, there's something happening on the table involving a cup and, and some coins and a piece of paper, and it's not clear what's happening exactly, but it appears to be important because the guy's really into it. And, uh, and now, where everything is, seems to be ready, uh, there's this message that what you're about to see is one go, no edit. Okay, you, you need to decide if you're going to believe that or not, but it is believable. Um, and he's pointing to the coin and he's taking this envelope. And all this gesturing suggests that there's a dramatic thing that is about to happen. So let's see what that is. And, let's see. and the envelope says McGill if you can. <laughs> so this is number one. Okay, this is move number one. Uh, hold your applause. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, here's move number two. Yeah. And it worked again. Every time I play it, it works. Every single time. So now, you know, now the question is, now the question is, when, when you see something like that, you need to have a few theories as to what happened here. And each one of you has a theory. Now, I can tell you the following. I can tell you that this is the kind of trick that you would find on the side of a cereal box. My six-year-old son would not be very proud performing this at school. <laughs> but he wouldn't know how to perform it like this. He would perform it like a six-year-old would perform it. And because he would perform it like that, you would see right through it in a second. The second he would perform it, you would say, that's how you do it, that's lame. But when I perform it like that, and believe me, it took us, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to shoot the whole thing. There's a professional touch to it. And the touch is not about the camera, believe me. It's not about angles. It's not about any particular, it's about presentation. As you notice, there's no pattern here. There's no talk. But there's a, I built a lot of expectation. With the things that I don't say, I build the expectation. With things that I gesture to, with particular emotions, gesticulation, drama. And I create a whole bunch of neural processes in your head as to what you should expect and where you should pay attention. And as a result, you pay attention usually to the wrong thing at the wrong time. If I'm lucky, you actually pay attention to the right thing at the wrong time, which is even better for me. But the worst thing for me is if you pay attention to the right thing at the wrong time. Because I often do all kinds of little things, and if you can just be very perceptive, and if you know what to look for, you'll see it. But I embellish it with so much noise that you just lose it. If you don't know what to look for, the noise like, dampens everything down. Now, how, do you, how does a magician generate noise? With distraction. So distraction is key. And you always distract people. You always distract them. You can distract them with humor, you know, you can distract them with humiliation. So let's say that you know somebody gives you a hard time, you start humiliating them. You know, or you, you, you target most people feel uncomfortable in the public eye. So let's say the Hill students. Okay, this is a classroom. You know, you're anonymous, largely. Okay, you're anonymous. You sit here, you view it. But if I start, you know, picking on particular people, and I can pick on particular people because I recognize some people here that I know, or that have been my students before, or something like that, some people would cringe, some people would thrive. I mean, depending on who you are, okay? And this is really important because at McGill, particularly in large classes, you're used to keeping quiet. So most people are used to keeping quiet. They don't like studying, having interactions, you know, with a professor because that's not the culture here. Now, it's really important to understand that a magician really does many things that are related to the culture. So the jokes need to be culturally appropriate, and you know, what you do needs to be cultural. So let me show you, and there's, there always needs to be some kind of a trick to it, or some kind of, a, of an issue to it. Let me
me show you one of the things that magicians do that a lot of people don't appreciate. So for that, I need volunteers. Okay, can I have, okay, why don't you come up? The first two who raise their hands, come on. So, we have certain cultural cues. For example, when you reach for a pack of cards, you're a magician, right? Why don't you stand over here and say what it's, okay? When you reach for a pack of cards, you're a magician. And that's why a lot of people often carry packs of cards in their pockets when they're magicians, because that's the expectation. Now, I'm going to show you a few things that would teach you that magicians have a slightly different mastery than you think of cards, okay? I'll shuffle. Now, I want you to see something important, okay, in what I do. First of all, before I continue, am I right-handed or left-handed? You don't know, do you? Am I right-legged or left-legged? <laughs> am I right-legged or left-legged? You're not paying attention. You had plenty of opportunity to observe this, but you didn't. A magician would. A magician would pay attention. Is the person gesturing with the right hand? Is the gesture with the left are, are they are they you know the same? Is this person likely to reach for things with their right hand? Why did he ask them to stand over here as opposed to over there? They were standing over there. Is it because there's better light? Is it does it have to do with the setup over here? You understand? Like a really skeptical, critical person would start like asking all these things. You don't know what's happening yet. But you're this is a this is a liar you're dealing with. So you, you, you try to figure out what's going on. Okay, is this shuffle? Good. You'll, you'll recognize pretty soon that it doesn't really matter. Okay, so, so I want you to do, I'm going to give each of you about one third of, because we're three, so why don't you take about a third? About a third? Yeah, and I get two thirds. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> now, I want you to do exactly what I'm doing. Okay, right-handed? Okay, you right-handed? Left-handed? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so why don't you send me one? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you to do. Okay, take a card in your strong hand, okay, and look at the people. Okay, just look at them. Okay, and then throw the card to a person that you like. Something like uh, something like this. Look at me and just repeat what I'm doing. Okay, so let's say you know. Like somebody, and then you say, Oh, you, uh, here you go, okay? Something like that. <laughs> Try to do that. Go ahead. <laughs> you try? Okay. Now, let's try to do it slightly better, okay? okay? <laughs> we forgot the magic words. Oh, okay. So, you look at someone, okay? You look at someone, and as you look at that person, you say, let's say it's inside, because I don't want them to know what the magic words are. So you bless the card, and you say the magic word, you look at people, and then you say, all right, uh, here you go, okay? So that was a little bit better. Okay, now you can do it a little bit better. <laughs> a little bit better, okay. <laughs> a little bit better. Not even. A little bit better. Okay. So now I want you to, because there was a very important reading that I didn't tell you, uh -oh. you need to bend your knees a little bit as you, as you do it. You need to bend your knees, so again, you, you say it in your heart, okay, and, and look, I get better at this also as I do it usually. So, you know, you look at the people, you look at them, you decide, okay, and then you say, um, here you go. Oh. It's very bad. It's very bad. You thought. Hey! Okay. You thought. Here you go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's, that's almost a record for us. <laughs> Let's try to go now fast, okay? Now you understand the technique. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw one new one, new one, okay? okay? And I want you to see when I change what I do, okay? Ready? Ready, Freddy? Okay. Okay. A little bit more dynamic, okay? <laughs> so look, okay? Oh my God. Okay, hold on, hold on. Oh. I want you to look. Uh, they are the distract. Why are you looking at? Them? <laughs> are they gonna, are they gonna do something that you don't know? <laughs> Why are you looking at them? But you, you keep on looking at them. I'm the only person who can do something here. Okay, so let's try. Let's try again. Okay, bend your knees. You know. Okay, ready? All right. All right. Okay, let's try and go. Okay, now here. 
Alright, well, let's try again. You tell me what I'm doing differently every time. Okay, ready? Ready? Do you know what I'm doing differently? No. Okay, pay attention, because it's all in front of you, okay? Very good. Sometimes I have to not succeed because you see what I'm doing. So I get, I get your attention up, okay? And then, you know, I can sometimes surprise you and sometimes not. Go ahead. Very good. Very good. Okay? Sorry, watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. Yeah, go ahead. Now, oh! Why are you sleeping? <laughs> do you not see? Do you not see that I switch cards? Oh no! <laughs> okay, so let, now I'm telling you that there's something about the cards. Okay, there, maybe there's something about the cards. Okay, so maybe I should have your cards instead. Okay, and you want to have a little bit of her cards? Yeah. yeah let's do that. <laughs> and okay. All right. So now I have regular cards. Only three. Okay. Ready. Ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Can I do anything? It's hard. No, no, it doesn't work with your cards. You try. You try. It doesn't yeah. work with my cards, yeah? Huh. Let's try with your cards again. Look carefully. Look what I'm doing. Maybe I'm putting some spit on it or something. <laughs> or pus. You know, or, you know? Okay, so I want you to look very carefully what's happening in my throw, if I'm throwing the same way or not. Go ahead. Good. And ready. Okay. So now I want you to see. Okay? Ooh, not so good. I, I'm out of cards. Can I have some more? Yeah? Okay, my cards? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Not good. Go ahead. Why are you looking at them? Why are you looking at them? It's very difficult not to look at them, but then you miss what I'm doing. I'm just waiting for you. I'm just waiting for you not to look at me for a second. And you keep on not looking at them. All of them. Okay, although I tell you exactly that it's about to come. And you keep on looking at them. Because we're so pretty, right? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna go, okay, if you don't mind. Okay? So I want you to I want you to see, I want you did anybody notice what I'm doing differently when it's when it works and when it doesn't work? What was that? Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show you. You don't have to look at my aids. I'm going to show you. Look only at me and see what's different. Because something is very different, but you have to see. If you don't see, okay, look. I'm not going to tell you if it's going to work or not. Okay, so I want you to look and develop a hypothesis about what's happening here. Why is it that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't? And I usually don't have two that work in a row, usually. Because I don't want to, I don't want you to see it. Okay, I don't want you to see it. And so to you it looks like every single time I do it the same way, but it's not the same way. Something happens. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So why does it work sometimes and sometimes it doesn't? Can you see? Because something physical is happening in front of you. But you're missing it. You're not seeing what I'm doing. Are you blind? <laughs> It has nothing to do with my feet. <laughs> it has nothing to do with my feet. So this was halfway. I did it halfway just to show you. It was halfway. Okay? Can you see or no? Can you yeah. see that I'm doing something different every time? Yes. What am I doing? Palm the card that you're going to throw in your hand. So can you tell me in advance if it's going to work or not? Well, can't see it here, but you have the... That's right. So I'm counting on the fact that you're too far to see also. Okay, so I'm counting on that fact. And as a matter of fact, I can do it in such a way that every single card would go, and that would expose the trick. A lot of magicians do that. They would go and they would throw like five cards that would work, and then they would stop. So you, you don't know what to look for, and they would bounce a few cards off the floor, they would throw them, and they would pop a balloon with them. Okay, and this is like athletics, like you need to be like in the card Olympics. You know, you know, you know, these kind of things. Thanks very much. We'll clean up at the end. So okay. rule number one, what you see is not always what you get. Okay, that's really, really important. Rule number two, rule number two, really, really important, is that magicians have a really great way of uh, tapping. There's a form of magic that is called mentalism. Do you know what mentalism is? 
Did you ever hear about mentalism? Mentalisms are tricks that appear. They're, they're, they're removed from these kind of things. You don't use accessories. You don't use things that you can see as magical types or items. It has to do with what you have in your pocket. So I usually like to work with money. So I assume people usually, when they come, they have some money on them. So does, does anybody have a $20 bill? Or a $100 bill? <laughs> or a $200 bill? Or something of that nature? Does anybody have a 20 here? So here's, why do, the people who have 20s, I need like three or four or five 20s. <laughs> okay, so if the people who have 20s, do you mind taking it out for a second? Just take it out and hold it in your hand, okay? Take it out and hold it in your hand. Look at the queen. Look at the queen. She has like this smile on her face. Look at the queen. And what I want you to do is you look at the queen. I'm going to, oh, I have one more card there. Okay, so I'm going to throw this card like this, okay? And you are the green, the yellow uh, shirt. You were chosen. Why don't you come up? <laughs> You have a $20 bill, that's good. It so happens that it worked perfectly, I don't know how. So, so why don't you come up? Keep your $20 because you're going to see something interesting. Just to say. Now, don't come near me, don't come near me because this is a very contagious trick. So I'm going to stay next stand over here. You're going to say, go back, go back, go back, go back. Don't fall down, just stand there. Okay, now, you're looking at the queen. Yeah. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to fold. You can do the same thing, guys, with the 20s. I want you to fold the bill with the queen on the outside and the boat with the rowers on the inside, okay? I've had lots of experience with $20 bills in Canada. Okay, so give it a good press, okay? Now, I want you to fold it one more time on the, on the queen's nose. Okay, so on the queen's nose, fold it up nice and tight. Everybody with the 20 is doing that? Yes. You got it? So you have it folded, keep it folded. Now, I have here a transparent box because I want everybody to be able to see it when I move away. So it's a transparent box. I don't know if the people in the back can see it. I need to see your bill, okay, without touching it. So I'm, why don't you come towards the box after I move away from the box? Okay, why don't you get closer to the box and drop gently your bill in the box and close the lid. That's it. And, and move back, move back, move back. Okay, so. Right now, we have a sterile box with a $20 bill that is folded. There. You're, you've done your part. Okay, you can go back. I'll call you at the end when I transform it to a dollar bill. <laughs> but the, the, the most important thing is this. The most important thing is the following. And I want you to, this is called mentalism. This is called mentalism, this particular um, streak of, of, of tricks. And whereas usual magicians, if you go to a bar mitzvah or something, they'll do tricks with eggs. You know, they'll, they'll make eggs vanish or they'll make an omelet or you know, something like that. <laughs> so these kind of tricks, when you work with an egg and you vanish it or, you, or you, you smash it or you do something, that's what you would expect from like a child show. That's your expectation. That this is something that is dangerous because it can crack and it can make a lot of dirt and, you know, splash and, you know, this is good when it's fried, it's not so good when it's, or, or boiled, but it's not so good when it's all over your jacket. So we'll get to that in, in just a second. But this kind of magic is considered intellectual cerebral magic. Now how does it work? First of all, I want to show you a few effects that people can do. So the first thing that I'm going to do, everybody with a $20 bill has folded their bills? Yes? Okay, don't open the bills until I tell you. I'm going to show you some interesting things. So the first thing that one does in mental magic is they start with something like this. And they sort of say, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting three digits. Six, five, one, and there's a whole drama to it. And you're not really sure what's happening. Okay? He's like, I'm getting six, five, one. And automatically, some people are beginning to think about whatever they're thinking about, which has nothing to do. But people are very associative, so they start thinking about, you know, 
what something has to do with 651. But I asked uh, this young lady over here to deposit, I hope you can see it still, to deposit their, uh, her, her $20 bill right in here, and I closed the lid so you know it's, it's completely contained. Okay, now, what I can do now is I can probably show you a few tricks that most people are unaware of that you can do with, in any country with any kind of coin or any kind of uh, bill if you just understand something about the system, which you usually don't. Okay, because usually you don't know too much about how coins and bills are prepared. But you'll see why 651 is actually going to be critical to this trick. Okay, I'll explain it to you in just a second. But for now, I want you to just start thinking, how is that going to be relevant and why? How is that going to be relevant and why? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this box. And actually, I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to ask you to examine it. I'm going to, I'm going to pass it around. I want you to look at the bill without opening the lid. Only when I give you the signal, I want you to open the lid. Fair? And just for ease of manipulation, I'm gonna, I have like a little lever over here, like a little um, um, thing, and I'm gonna ask you to hold it by the lever because I don't want anybody to touch the lid. Okay, so it's, gonna, it's basically gonna look like this when I, when I pass it around. You wanna take it? Actually, why don't you start with this? So I want you to examine the bill just like so, okay? Walk it around, and I'm going to start. I'm going to start talking to you now about something really, really important. Six five one. What comes before? Does anybody know? Six fifty. What am I trying to do here? E. What am I trying to do? A serial number. Is it possible? E. What comes after E? Do you know? R. After R. You know? Are you sleeping? You don't know her serial number of the $20 bill that she had? No, I do. I'm going to show you that I know. It's so obscure that she doesn't even she doesn't know what her serial <laughs> number was. I mean, it's, it's so weird that that's the situation. Magicians thrive on these weird situations where we take something that belongs to you and we tell you more about it than you actually knew. So at some point in the inspection process, I see we haven't gotten very far, unfortunately. <laughs> but at some point, just so, so that the lecture doesn't take, you know, that doesn't go further the demonstration, why don't we stop, let's say, with you, the person that you just got to, why don't you now take the bill out, okay, because it needs to come back to her at the end. Take it out, yeah, to open the lid, take it out, look at the serial number, but don't tell me what it is and don't let anybody else tell me what it is, okay? So <laughs> only you. And, and tell me if so far I'm on the right track. Just, just tell me if I'm on the right track or not. Yeah. I am. OK, so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to do maybe um, um, A. Don't say anything. Just don't say anything. 7. 0. 4. 4. So far, am I doing all right? Or so far, don't, just just don't tell me anything specific. But am I am I in the direction? Am I getting closer? Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, there's a lot of information here. So this one, I'm not sure about. I'm sure about everything, or almost, but I'm not sure about this one. So let me just ask some people. Other people with twenties. Other people who had twenties. Okay. Can you just raise your hand? OK. Uh, so uh, you, sir, with the glasses. So can you tell me the first three digits? I'm sorry, the first three letters of your bill, of your $20 bill? E-L-Z. E-L-Z, which I guess in English is E-L-Z, right? It's the same thing. <laughs> so OK, can I have another Can I have another one? Just the, three, the first three. Yes, I recognize you from somewhere. Yeah. ALD. ALD. Okay, so I'm going to change my letter to uh, to uh, W, and that's my final answer. Is this correct? Yes. That's it. Now, usually, I get more than twenty bucks in order to perform something like this, and usually I stretch it over an hour. 
I don't do it in two minutes like I did it here. But the trick is the same. And it's a combination of sleight of hand, statistics, and cold reading. Do you know what cold reading is? Well, it's like 410 people know what cold reading is. There's people who just like 410. But there's an element in all of you, there's a, she should get her money back. I, think. <laughs> I should, and I, and, I, and I should probably get some of it. Right? <laughs> but the, the, import, the important thing here is that you are